God is good. And all the time. Hallelujah. Are we happy to be in the house of the Lord? This is Super Sunday. A day of miracles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we happy to be here? We're going to praise the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Lomu songaka. Lomu songaka. Sia ubonga. Wedges. Lomu songaka. I want everybody to do this. Sia ubonga. Chesu lomu
Rosa, 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 God is good.
Tell your neighbor it's good to see you. Shake your neighbor it's good to see you. Tell them it's good to see you. Welcome to Super Sunday 2017. We are building on this. We're beginning this month, next month. We're doubling, quadrupling. We're building on this. Can somebody say amen? amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand of praise. Listen, when God speaks, you must listen. You must pay close attention. There are people who are going to miss the move of the Spirit because they are not attentive. This whole month of May was a month of miracles. And I don't know how many people understood the message we were preaching. Or you are just excited so things can work for you and then you forget. You know, I was, I was in Botswana this past week. And uh, we, we were being ministered to by men who are doing such a great work on the continent. And one of them was Dr. Mensa Otabil who has over 1,000 churches. You didn't hear what I'm saying. I said over 1,000 churches. I said over 1,000 churches. And he said a very powerful statement that we really don't need people who are able to do the work of God. When you are able, you've got hands, you've got, you can walk, you can see, you can hear. That's not, God does not need someone who's able to do his work. God needs a faithful person. Aksibila Nkwishisha Nakri. Mudimu needs someone who's faithful. In other words, if I am your pastor, and I say do something, I need to know that you are faithful to do that. You don't do it because you say, well, I can do it. I don't need that. And I thought very deeply about what he said. He said, if you have faithful people, the work of God will run smoothly. Because people who are able, they can disappoint you tomorrow. You can trust them. You, you trust people who are able to do the work, they will disappoint you tomorrow. They can give you reasons why they don't do it tomorrow. And what can you do? They just remind you that, you know what? I'm just here to get what I can get from you. But I don't, I'm not committed. Don't count me in. So they can be busy in what they're doing because they're unfaithful. They're just wasting your time. The work of God is built on men and women who are faithful. That's why he says... When I stand before him, he will say, welcome, thine good and faithful. Good and faithful. He's not saying good and you are able to do it. He says faithful. I wonder how many of us are faithful in this place. How many of you, you are faithful to so can say, count on me to do one, two, three, four. So I don't have to beg you. I don't have to ask you you know it's your responsibility as a child of God to do that. Because you are faithful to God. Praise the Lord. You are faithful to God. The church is not a place where you come to church to get something from church. Church must not promise people nothing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
I don't come to church because I want to be buried. Of course you'll be buried. I don't come to church because they must bless me. Of course God will bless you. Church is not that. Church is something bigger than that. He says it is what Jesus said in Matthew 16, verse 18. I will build my church. He says, I will build my church. Jesus never promised anything. Is anybody hear what I'm saying? He did not promise you that when you come to church, this is what I'll do for you. That's wrong. It's wrong. You can have people who are in uh, political parties. When it's Sunday, they're, they're busy. Busy making sure the event of their parties is a success. You cannot count on Christians. They will give you every reason in the world why they cannot be faithful. And you, that is hurting the Holy Spirit. And the very same person will come to you and say, pray for me. I need this. Pray for me. I need this. What do you take God for? When God needed you, you were not there. What do you take? Because you think, you see, you think when I go to church, I'm, I'm expecting the church to do one, two, three, four, five for me. There's no way in the Bible where the Bible says the church owes you anything. No way. The church is a college. When you come to church, you are coming to a school. You must be nurtured into the grace of God within the local church. 1 Timothy 3, 10, 15, he says the church is the pillar of truth. The ground and the pillar of truth. He never said expect something from church. No way in the Bible. Is anybody hear what I'm saying? Yeah. It's wrong for you to say, I joined that church because this is what they will give me. You are wrong. You have not understood the gospel. You don't understand the gospel. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Well, I go there. They do this for me. Well, they promise this. That's not a church. It's a social club. That's not the church of Jesus Christ. Jesus calls all of us to a life of self-denial. If anyone wants to follow me, he must carry up his cross and follow me. That's Jesus. If you, want, if you love me more than your wife, your husband, your mother, your father, your brother or sister, what did he say? You are not fit to be my disciple. That's Jesus. That's Jesus. If you want to follow me, lay down your life and follow me. That's Jesus. He does not promise anybody anything. He says... You want to follow me, you must lay down your life. Because Christianity is all about self-denial. Philippians 3.10, Paul says that I may know him. And the power of his resur resurrection. You go further, he says, I forget those things that are behind and I press forward. He never promised anybody. Paul was one of the powerful scholars, one of the powerful uh, Pharisee, powerful Christian who ever lived. And yet, he said, I'm willing to walk away from it all. Just only to gain to know Christ. Amen. Change your thinking. Change your thinking. We don't serve God in order to get something. Change your thinking. Because you are denying yourself to know Christ fully. You are expecting Christ to give you something. He has not promised you anything. In fact, you and I, we owe him our very lives. We owe him our very lives. And what did he say? You do that, I promise you one thing. He says, hundredfold in this life. Not only in this life, and also in the life to come. That's what Jesus said. That's what he said. He's calling every one of us to follow him. To follow him. He never said, come to church. This is what you will get. He says, come to church. You are in my church. It is the one I am building. Eh? That church is the pillar and the ground of truth. You, are, you must be planted there, Psalm 92 says. They will grow like the cedars of Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord our God. They shall flourish 
he says. So in God's house, there is flourishing. There is, there is growing. That's what he promised. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Where? In the house of the Lord. I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Just for the rest of my life. He never promised something. Jesus in John 15 said, here's what he said. It is my father's good pleasure that you must bear fruit. What I've been teaching all this while, one day you will stand before God. Sometimes we live as if there is no eternity. Hey, Jesus says this world and all of its last passes away. But the man and the woman who does the will of the Father will abide forever. That's Jesus. Amen. We live as if there is no eternity. We live as if all that we see, that's all. You die, is all over. No, no. There is a day of accountability. You're going to account before God. He says, the way you lift your life. Yeah? That's why he says, their works will follow them. I challenge you. Take God's work serious. I challenge you. Take the kingdom of God serious. Everything else doesn't matter. What is important is the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness, he said. Seek it. When you seek for something, you turn the tables. You scrap everywhere. It's like something is lost. You've got to seek it until you find it. Yes, give the Lord a big hand of praise. Seek it. You better stop playing games. Stop playing games with God. You seek it. The kingdom of God is like a costly pearl, Jesus said, that is hidden in the field. He says it's a costly pearl. It's hidden in the field. You've got to look for it. He says the kingdom of God is like a lost coin in the house where a woman cleans the whole house until she finds it. That's Jesus talking here. Until she finds it. How much are you seeking God's kingdom? How much are you willing to look for it? To search it? And when man find it, the kingdom of God is like a seed. It is planted. It grows into a strong tree. The best of the earth, they come under its shade. That's Jesus. What, what kind of a gospel have you received? What kind of a gospel are you following? If we cannot understand what Jesus, what are you following? That's my question. You'll find out at the end of life that you followed something that was never there. Because you rejected the kingdom and follow what people promise you. I made up my mind a long time ago. It is the kingdom of God and nothing else. It is the kingdom of God, nothing else. I've laid down my life for it. I've given everything for it. It's the kingdom of God, nothing else. He says, I liken a person like that. Like a man who builds a house upon the rock. When the winds comes and the waves of the sea comes, it cannot be moved because it is founded upon the rock. That's what Jesus said. You build your life on the gospel. Be serious about this. You can't be running after things that don't really add any value, spiritual value to your life. Hey, listen to me. Spirituality, your life in Christ is the foundation for everything. Don't you understand? All these things you are running after, all these things you are seeking, they are going to pass away. Please listen to me. They can promise you water. They can spray with water. They can give you the oil. And all of those things, those things are passing away. You have missed what is important. The kingdom of God. When we teach you the gospel, we're not wasting your time. 
There are people who are waiting to hear this gospel. They will pay, they will do anything for someone to teach them the gospel. You have an opportunity and you are playing with it. You are playing with it. You have an opportunity, you are playing with it. You think you are smart. You think you are smart. God doesn't work like that. I will give me your life. I will give you eternity. Give me your life. I give you eternity. That's Jesus. I give you where I come from. There must be an exchange if you want to serve God. Your life. I give you eternal life. This is eternal life. That they may know you as the only true living God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Those are ways of Christ. When you even give, you give your time. How can you eat what belongs to God? You don't, you're not even afraid. You are, you are, your conscience is seared with hot iron. Paul said, 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 4. In the last days, verse 1. Are, are, are difficult times will come. Difficult times. Many will depart away from the faith. Follow seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. They will move away from the truth. And because we live in this consumerism society where we consume everything, spirituality is the last thing on our mind. As long as we can consume to appear real to the outside world. And yet, you miss everything which is important. The kingdom of God. We are consumers. We even consume anything. Even mu gospel music, we consume it. We don't even care whether it points to Christ or to the flesh. We don't care. We are consumers. We can pay for it. Our conscience is seared, is dead. Come on, say, I hear. Come on, say, I hear. Say, I hear. We are living in typical times, Brother Wan. I want to say to you, don't play with God. God gives you a job, as Brother Ndumiso said. Don't play with God. The very same passage of Galatians, Galatians 6. I don't know whether you read it. He said, what you sow to the flesh, you shall reap corruption. Then he says, but if you sow to, your, to the spirit, you shall reap life everlasting. Galatians 6, right, is an economic uh, 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 pericope. It's a passage. Read it and study it. You sow to the flesh, you exactly that's what you'll get. God does not need your money. What do we think when we give money? That means we please. He does not need our money. God needs our hearts. He needs us more than what we can bring to him. He doesn't need our money. We give money to advance his cause, to advance his gospel. But God needs us. Our giving is just to show him that we love him. But he needs us. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Tell your neighbor, pastor is talking now. As I tell your neighbor, pastor is talking now. Lift up your hands, Jesus. Amen. 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 Everybody, come on. Amen. Hallelujah. One more time, everybody, come on. Amen. 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 Amen, amen, amen. 
sing it now. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, Amen. Come on, sing it, everybody. Come on. Hallelujah. Lift up both of your hands. I want you to come before the presence of God. Lord, search my heart. I want the kingdom of God. Search my heart. That's what I want. I want the kingdom of God. Come on, lift up your hands and close your eyes. Amen, amen, amen. Oh. to pray in the spirit right now. Close your eyes, lift up your hands. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Open your mouth. Come on, lift it up high, pray in the Holy Ghost, come on now. happening as you are praying right now. Something is happening as you pray right now. Let it go. Let it out. Let it out. Let it out. Pray. 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 The Holy Spirit is doing something right now. Come on. Come on, pray. Everybody pray in the Holy Ghost. 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 Makapaso teke me me me. The chains are breaking off your mind. Chains are breaking off your heart and your spirit. There's one thing I know everywhere I go. Jesus in me has never failed yet up to this far there's one thing I know everywhere I may go Jesus in me has never failed Fill me yet. Oh, there's one thing I know Everywhere I go Jesus in me 
has never failed. Lift up your hands, close your eyes as you sing it. Uh, come on now. There's one thing, there's one thing I know everywhere. Jesus in me, Jesus in me has never failed. For the last time. Thank you for your word. We give you the praise. Thank you. Your word is truth. Your word is life. As we share it today, release the power of your written word and the power of your living word. Your word is truth, your word is life. In the name of Jesus, we are praying. And the church say amen. I want you to open your Bibles, please, to the book of Acts, chapter 16. I want to read from verse 1. Acts 16, verses 1. Then came he to Debe and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple there named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewish and believed. I want you to underline that. The woman believed. When the Bible says she believed, it simply means she was a believer. She was born again. Which, or rather, okay, but his father was a Greek. Verse 2, which was well reported of by the brethren, and there were at Lystra, that were at Lystra and Iconium. Him would Paul have to go forth with him, and took and circumcised him because of the Jews, which were in those quarters. For they knew all that his father was Greek. Can you guys just come down here because I need to turn the speaker to minimize the echo. Just turn the speaker that way. This one on the stage. Can you just come down here so you we minimize the echo. Verse 4, and as they went through the cities, they delivered them the decrees for to keep that were ordained of the apostles. Just turn the speaker. Just turn it around. And elders which were at Jerusalem. And so were the churches established in the faith. They were established in the faith and increased in number daily. They increase in... I, I want you to look at verse 5. Yes, I think that's better. Can you read for me verse 5, all of you? One, two, go, read. One more time. One, 
One more time. I want you to listen to what is the churches were established. The word, underline that word established, because the word established means anchored. It means planted in the faith. That you could not uproot them from the faith. They were anchored in the faith. And as long as they were anchored in the faith, he says they increased in number. In other words, the church grew in number because of one ingredient, they were rooted in the faith. They were established in the faith. If you go back to the lessons when we started some weeks ago, we spoke about different types of faith. And I said there is saving faith. Saving faith is when you give your life to Christ. You, you cannot be saved unless you believe. According to Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, you believe with your heart, you confess with your mouth. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But now, the faith he talks about in Acts is not the issue of faith in God that you use to pray when you pray. It's not the faith you use when you ask something from God. He talks about, Jude talks about our common faith. And Paul says here, they were, Luke says in Acts, they were established in the faith. In Jude, Jude says, we have our common faith. Which simply means, you cannot say, you believe in Jesus, and I believe in Jesus, and you believe differently. It doesn't work like that. There has to be a common faith. A common denominator when coming to our faith. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So the churches were established in what Paul taught them. Taught them. The faith they have received when they came to Christ is the same faith that helped them to be anchored into the truth. It was not something different. Now, I want you to go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. Go there. Let me show you something. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Are you still here? 2 Timothy chapter 2. Let's read verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 2 from verses 1. We are dealing with being established in the faith. Being established in the faith. Can you read for me verse 1 and 2? 2 Timothy chapter 2. I want you all to read verses 1 and 2. Are you ready? One, two, go. Funda. Stop there. Stop there. Read again verse 1. Louder. One, two, go. Louder. Read. He says, be strong in what? I don't hear you. You must be strong in what? I said, I don't hear you. Be strong in what? And whose grace is that? Whose grace is it? Okay. How can you be strong in the, in the grace without the faith? You cannot know the grace. You cannot be strong in the grace if you do not have the faith. All right. Remember Mark chapter 11, verses 19 and 20. He says what? Have the faith of God. Have faith in God. Now, when we hug back there, hug hukela back there, then we deal with the grace and faith. Be strong in the faith, in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Mark says, have faith in God. You cannot be strong in the faith if your faith in God is timid. Faith in God is what makes you to know that he exists. Amen. Hebrews 11 verse 6, it says, when you come to God, know that God is present. God is present. He is. You cannot even pray if you don't understand God is present. Amen. 
The reason why you pray is because you believe God is present. You believe God is real. God is there. Otherwise, why do you pray after all? Hey, come on. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So now he says, be strong in the faith, in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Now, go to verse 2. You hear what he says in verse 2. One, two, go. Read verse 2. Read. The things you had me preach, the things you had me teach and preach among many witnesses. He says, take them to faithful people. Oh my God. In other words, this grace you have received, this grace you are anchored in must make you to take it further. You cannot keep it to yourself. He says, take it to many faithful witnesses. In other words, when they receive it, they also will pass it to someone else. They will pass it to others. You don't keep it to yourself. You are strong in the grace. Hello? As you are strong in the grace... You've got to make sure you pass it on to others. Paul said to Timothy, you had me teach about something that you have received. Don't keep it to yourself. Pass it on. Now, it's a very dangerous statement because Jesus said in the Gospels, you cannot take the food of the children and give it to the swine. Hold on, let's deal with the text. Why Paul used the word faithful? Take it to faithful servants who will teach to others. Why? Why have to choose for faithful people? Because what you have received is precious. What you have received, it is something. If someone finds it, they will keep it. They will not lose it. So take it to faithful ones. The faithful ones, when they receive it, they'll be able to pass it on to others. But you see, you can preach, you can sweat. The people who are listening to you, if they are not faithful in hearing, you are wasting your time. Because you may be telling them words of life. And they cannot even discern that what you are talking about, it is truth. It is food for their souls. They see it as a waste of time. But Paul said to Timothy, first of all, he calls him my... Uh, where is that? Let me read for you. He says, my son. He calls Timothy, my son, be strong in the grace. My son, Timothy. In other words, you have seen you faithful. Carry the message I taught you to others. That's why he calls him my son, Timothy. Now listen. Then he says, verse 3, you must enjoy hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You cannot walk with Christ and you are not ready and willing eh, to be able to pay the price to follow him. You must be willing to pay the price to follow him. You can't walk with him if you are not willing to be a soldier. You must dirty your hands to follow Christ. Eh? You must be there in the mud to follow Christ. It is not an easy thing to follow Christ. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He says, be prepared. Be prepared to be a soldier. Be prepared. Sometimes it's going to be rough. Timothy, sometimes it's going to be rough. Be prepared. He says, but you are my son. I know that what I have taught you will keep you even when things are hard. Let's give the Lord a big hand of praise. Be established in the faith. Somebody say, I'm established in the faith. Say, sir, I'm standing in the faith. Say it louder. I'm standing in the faith. Go to Ephesians chapter 6 verse 16. Ephesians 6 16. 
he says we must take the shield of faith. Not only are we supposed to be established, he, he says you must go further now and take the shield of faith. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 6, uh, verses 16, above all, Ephesians 6, 16, above all, take the shield of faith where you are able to quench all the fiery dust of the wicked. Take the shield of faith. Don't just only stand on the faith. Make faith as a shield. Then he says, you are able to stand against the dust. Hey, come on here. Do you know this game called darts? You know the game darts? Hello? You know darts? You take that, uh, what do you call that thing? Huh? What do you call it? Darts. And then, the darts, the, there is a board on the wall. And on that board, there is a circle in the middle. So as you have these darts, you've got to throw it. The goal is to hit the center of the board. So Paul is saying, your faith must be a shield so that when the devil throw the darts, he must not reach your center. Amen. Hallelujah. When he throws the weapons as a dart, because that dart, that dart is like a, is like a weapon. It's like a spear. It's like a needle. The enemy is targeting an area in our lives. We must make sure that the shield of faith is surrounding us. And so that you are able to stand against. Eh? Stand against. With the shield of faith, you are able to stand. Whether the enemy throws at the back or on the side or ahead of you, he must find the shield of faith surrounding you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He says, you are able to stand. So he says, take the shield of faith. Take the shield of faith. Where you are able to stand against the darts of the devil. Then he says, you are able to quench. Quench the fiery darts. He says, the darts are fiery. They come like fire. The word fiery simply means that when they reach the target, they are there to demolish. They are there to burn the target to ashes. The darts of the devil, they, they are fiery darts. But there is one thing that is able to quench them, that is able to put them to bay. It is the shield of faith. The shield of faith. So it says, the enemy is throwing the darts. He sees me there. He sees you there. And he takes the darts and throws it. When he throws it, he's not throwing it in order to miss. He throws it in order to reach the target. It might be your job. It might be your health. It might be whatever business. The darts comes in many, many ways. From all directions. But he says, he must find you clothed. He must find you clothed with a shield of faith. So the fiery dust when they're coming, they can't reach you. There is something, a barrack, a garrison around your life. It is called the shield of faith. Let's give the Lord Jesus a big hand of praise. It is called the shield of faith. But now I want to go further. And I want you to look at what he says here. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. 1 Corinthians. We're talking about this thing called faith. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. Can you read for me verse 13? 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. One, two, go, read. Read it louder. I don't hear you. Now, 
What abides? Say it. One. What remains? Say it. Number one. Number two. Number three. What abides? Number one. Come on, say it now. What abides? Number one. Number two. Number three. What abides? Number one. Number two. And then? Is it not surprising? He's not talking about the gifts. When you read chapter 12, he was dealing with the ministration of the gifts of the Spirit. But now, he's not talking about the gifts. He's talking about are these three remains. In other words, everything will pass away. He just told us in verse 1, even though I can have, I can speak with tongues of angels. If I don't have love, I'm just like a sounding cymbal. If I can offer my body to be burned as a sacrifice, if I don't have love, I am nothing. And then he comes and says, only three things will remain at the end of it all. Hope, faith, and love. And I know you think that the emphasis of, of that verse is love. You are wrong. The emphasis of that verse is not love. The emphasis of that verse is faith. You say, but I mean, when, when you read uh, according to text, why, you know, I mean, love num number, number one, number two. We're not talking about that. Listen, the emphasis there is faith. Why? Because key to man, it's faith that makes all things happen. Why? You cook love and hope and tell me what you'll get. But put faith there. You can have love and don't have faith and receive nothing from God. The Bible says by faith we receive. Without faith it is impossible to please God. He never said without love. He never said without hope. But without faith. Eh? Hey, come on, come on class. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Eh, 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 eh. That, you are wrong. He's not, he's, he never said without love you can't see God. He says without faith. So that text deals with faith in God, not love. So stop preaching wrong things. Yeah, if you are a Christian, you don't have love, you'll never see heaven. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You'll never see heaven, you don't have love. Well, if I tell you, how about if I tell you the love he talks about is not human love. The love he talks about is reality. What we call reality is God himself. What will remain? Faith, hope, and love. Love there is a person. is God. Now, let's, let's unpack that verse. You can't have faith without hope. You can't have hope without faith. Faith and hope, it sounds as if it's the same thing. It's not the same thing. If I have faith, for me to believe God for a new job, I must have faith. And while I'm waiting God to answer my prayer to get a job, I must have hope. Hope is the thing that makes faith to be real and to keep on holding on. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So faith does not operate alone. Faith must have a supporting pillar, which is hope. While I'm waiting, while I'm still praying, I am hoping with faith that all things will be well. Hallelujah. Are you learning something today? Are you learning something today? Now, let, let, let's, be, let's do what we call application. Let's be practical now. Can we be practical now? Take faith. Take hope. Take love. Put them together. What you find there, you realize that when God made the heavens and the earth, he did not use love. He did not use hope. He used faith. Let there be the light. God spoke things into existence before they even existed. Let there be the light. 
In other words, when God said, let there be the light, the light did not come and stand here and say, okay, God, what do you want me to do? I'm here. My name is light. So, what are you saying? What are we account? No. When he says, let there be the light, the light came and it, it, was, it was lighting everywhere. He spoke things into existence. He was able to take things from eternity past. From eternity, the walls, the light, the heavens, those things were in eternity. He spoke them into existence, into the present world. And they came into being. But when he says, let us make man in our own image, he did not speak the word. He came down and took the soil, put it together, and made man. Man was not created by the word of God. Man was created by the breath of God, not his word. You didn't get it. You didn't get it. The, everything was created by the word, but man was created by the breath of God. The, 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 the piece of clay of this body, God made. He joined them together with his breath. The Hebrew word there is, is a... a, a For the right word, I'll, I'll get it. When that came together with the body of man, it made man a living soul. In other words, you are alive because of the breath of God. If the breath of God is out of your lungs, you are dead. You are back to square one. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Let's, let's be practical now. We are going to speak things by faith as we close this month. Write everything you want God to do, but write it down on a piece of paper, quickly. I give you one minute, write it down. Write it down. Don't show it to me, write it down now. What is it you want God to do for you? Write it down. Am I still having church now? Am I still having church? Yes. Write it down. I'm going to show you. Let, let's, let's be practical. Let's bring this message to reality. Let's not talk in riddles. Write down. Write five things you want God to do for you. Five. Others I see, they don't need anything. God has blessed them. They don't arrive. I don't know why. You know. God has blessed you so much. Maybe short, give us the, re the, the receipt. If, if you don't want to write, I don't know what's your problem. Get a paper, write. You're writing your secret behind the Bible. And you're going to leave that Bible in church. We know your name. We'll see your name. No. Don't disallow it. What did you write now? God be my husband. They will find it out because your, your Bible has got a name. Hallelujah. We are going to declare. We are going to speak things into existence by the power of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Hey, I said praise the Lord. Watch your words. Eh? Move by the power of the Holy Spirit. Watch your words. Move by the power of the Holy Spirit. Watch things happen by the power of the spoken word. Are you ready? Stand to your feet. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. One, two, go. Pray. Come on, come on, come on. Be serious now. Be serious. Pray, pray, pray in the Holy Ghost. Let let. Lift up your voices. Pray in the hall for 30 seconds. Before now we get into declarations. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, pray, pray, pray in the Holy Ghost. We are working on something this morning. 
is the power of the Holy Spirit. Lebra soka mama mama dereke zika tala la mama ndrose re papa baya seke teke le la baba se ra baya kata kaso taka la la ma re papa papa ya kase ke teke ra baya sende ria baka so kala la base ikara ra papa pande come on come on let's do it now something is happening something is happening i speak the word of god over your life I speak the word of God over your life. I speak breakthrough over your life. As you are going to declare, I declare that the Holy Ghost open the door for your words in the realm of the Spirit, in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Makapara robo saka, come on, come on. Open your mouth, declare, open your mouth and declare. Come on, come on, come on, declare, declare, declare. Pray in other tongues. As you pray, it is happening as you pray. It is happening as you are praying. It is happening as you declare it. Raka pato kosete kerele mama maya kase. Raka papa sete. Turn it around, Holy Ghost. 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 Turn it around. Turn it around. Turn it around. Turn it around in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Prayer, 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 prayer. Pray. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Come on, come on. Come on, in the name of Jesus. Come on, guys, come on, guys, don't get tired. Don't get tired. When you get tired, the devil wins. The devil wins when you get tired. He wins. Prayer, 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 prayer. Declare it, declare it. Declare it, declare it. In the name of Jesus, declare it. Oh yes, Lord. Rebe sakata kala la mande ria ba 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 se. Look, look at your prayer items and pray. Prayer, prayer, prayer. Ara ba 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 shikata kala la mande ria ma 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 shikata la la ma. Rabba ba 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 sika takala la mandor. Prayer, 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 prayer. As you declare, possess your promise. As you declare right now, in the name of Jesus. One, two, three. Go prayer. Begin to possess now. Possess the promise. Possess the promise. Possess the promise. Come on, come on, open your mouth, open your mouth, possess it. Possess it, possess it, possess it. Possess it. Possess the promise. Oh my God. Oh my God. Possess the promise. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let's give the Lord a big hand of praise. Come on, let's give the Lord a big hand of praise. Tell your neighbor, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. Come on, tell your neighbor, it's mine. Tell your neighbor, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. You may be seated. 
If you are here, you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. If you want me to pray for you, you want to give your life to Christ, lift up your hand wherever you are. I'm going to pray. Is there anyone who say, Pastor, pray for me. I want to give my life to Christ. Lift up your hand. God bless you. Lift it up high. Up high. Up high. Up high. God bless you at the back. Is there, where is another one? God bless you. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. I want to give my life to Christ. Lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. Is there another one? Where is another one? I want to give my life to Christ. God bless you. I see another one there. God bless you. If you raise up your hand, no, don't drop it. Don't put it down. If you raise up your hand, come out of your chair. Ashas, are you seeing the people? And come forward. If you raise up your hand, come, come and stand here. Come from the back. Come. We are coming to pray. Come, my brother. Come. Ashas, come on. Come on. Help the people. Let them come. Yes. You face that way. Stand right here. No, no. Face that way, brother. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. I repent of my sins. I give you my heart. I give you my life. Wash me in your blood. I believe with my heart. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Write my name in the book of life. I receive eternal life right now into my spirit. I believe Jesus Christ is Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. Right now, I believe I'm a child of God. My sins are forgiven and I'm born again. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, you said in your word, those who come to you, you'll never refuse. I pray that my Lord and my God break every chain off of their lives, off of their minds and their hearts. I commend them, Lord, to you and to the word of your grace, which is able to save them and to build them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Samangli wanna write me the best. Hallelujah. All right. Let's go as we receive communion quickly. We're out of time. Uh, 1 Corinthians 13. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and the blood. Whoever, whoever, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Let every man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Heavenly Father, we thank you as we partake of this table. We thank you, Lord, for the finished work of the cross. We thank you, Father, for what you have done on our behalf. Help us not to forget the finished work of the cross. We do so this morning, Lord, knowing fully well that you paid a heavy price for our eternal souls. Sanctified and blessed, and those who will partake of it, in Jesus' name. Uh, we are praying. We'll just take the bread and eat. Make sure that you bring back the cup. Okay, go ahead.
Let's close our eyes and be reverent as we remember what Jesus did for us on the cross. Let's just be reverent and remember what he did for us. at the back. Is everybody done? Are we, are we covered? Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the finished work. We thank you, Father, for the price you paid for us. We are forever and eternally grateful that from now on we shall not be condemned We shall be with you forever. Thank you for Calvary. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church say amen. amen. Listen, the Lord just spoke to me as we were receiving communion. And he says I must pray for people who have started businesses. I must pray for them, lay hands on them. For an, an anointing of acceleration. Because those people are important in the work of God. If that's you, come forward here. Those people are very important in the work of God. Praying for business people now. You said in your word, I'm the Lord thy God who gives you the power, the ability to get wealth. Here are these brethren. Some of them, my Lord, they may see this as something small, but before you it's not small. As you begin this journey of empowering them by the Holy Spirit to advance, to increase in their businesses, I bless their businesses right now. And I pray that as they leave this place, they may know why they're in that business is to support the gospel. And Lord, I lay my hands as you lay your hands upon them through my hands for the blessing to be released upon their lives and begin to increase them and multiply them in Jesus' name. 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 In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Let's give the Lord a big hand of praise.